Hey guys, it's me, Reds. Did you miss me? I know it's been so long since I saw you. Like a whole 24 hours. Or maybe more if you're not watching these and you're like binging. Because binging is fine. Okay, anyway. Today I'm going to be reading from r slash malicious compliance. Are you ready for some stories? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's go. Workplace gets robbed of thousands of pounds of stock after new boss tells me I'm not the supervisor and I must comply with my contract. So around 10 years ago, I worked for a small independent construction supplies store. We sold various things from measuring tapes to power drills, plumbing fittings to sheet timber and paint to roof tiles. I'd been there for three years at this point and got on well with everyone. There is about 12 employees in total and everyone helped everyone. The atmosphere was always happy and cheerful. The boss, let's call him Jeff, was a star. I loved him. He was laid back as hell and we had a lot of mutual interests, sports teams, bands, movies, etc. He would bring in stacks of donuts every Friday for the team. Jeff was just the best boss ever. We had this supervisor, Len, who'd been with the company a good while. Len would come in early and open up in the morning before anyone else arrived and would stay back at night to lock up and close the gates. When Len left the company to move to his wife's home country about two years into my being there, I agreed with Jeff that I would take over from Len with regards to opening in the morning and closing at night. The verbal agreement with Jeff and HR slash payroll was that I was not promoted to supervisor. I was happy with that as I didn't want the extra hassle, plus the soup had to work every third Saturday, where I didn't. Jeff took on the extra duties that went with the role, but I was to be paid an extra two hours per day for the added duties in the morning and at night. Things were normal for a good while, until Jeff went on long term sick leave. He was a huge loss in and around the place and naturally we were all worried about him. I visited him regularly while he was absent and kept him up to date with the goings on and gossip. In the meantime, the firm hired a temporary replacement manager, Rick the Prick, to fill in for Jeff. This guy was a complete buttock of the highest order. No one liked him. He was smug and arrogant. He would say crude things to females and had this top dog, tough guy attitude mess with me at your peril kind of guy. It was to the point where the donuts on a Friday were ordered to be stopped. Signs up the lot. With the extra OT money I had taken over the buying of the Friday donuts so as to keep morale high. But no, it had to stop. Soon enough Rick was assessing the timesheets and noticed my daily two hours overtime claim. He called me in to speak about it and I informed him that as per the agreement with Jeff and HR slash payroll, he asked if I had it in writing and I said no. It was a verbal agreement that the people from HR slash payroll would back me up on. Rick was his typical arrogant smart bastard self and told me, I don't give an F what you've agreed to. It ain't in writing so you ain't getting the F and OT. Oh, I know it doesn't take two hours per day to lock and unlock some effing door or two. I have a good reason to write you up for falsifying timesheets for this. It stops now. You work your stated hours and you do only the stated duties as per your contract. Thing is, the silly bastard confirmed what he said to me by way of an email just so... Oh, I had it in writing so I was perfectly clear as to what my place in the company was. Fine by me, Rick. That evening I hung the shop keys in the key cabinet and went to wash up. I wasn't the last out, but I left at 5.05pm instead of my usual 5.45 or thereabouts. I walked out while all the lights were left on, the doors were unlocked, the gates were left open, even the roller shutter door in the warehouse was left half open. The next morning I arrived a little after 7.15 instead of my usual 6.30. Some colleagues had already turned up by this point. The place had been done over good style. All the power tools were gone. Loads of woodstock was gone. Pipes, all gone. Paint, all gone. 
it had been ransacked good and proper. An estimated 30 to 40 thousand pounds of stock was gone. As the store was now a crime scene, we were all sent home until further notice. We all had to give statements to the police and a few days later I was called into a meeting with HR and Rick the Prick. I was well aware of what was coming and was well prepared. He went to town on me. He accused me of being in on it as I was the only key holder. I wasn't. And that I was facing years in prison. I sat in silence as he fired me six times in that meeting. Dereliction of duties. Breach of a verbal contract. Apparently that's a thing. The lot. He was coming after me like a wildfire because I had failed to ensure that the building was secured as was the ongoing agreement put in place by my previous boss. After what seemed like forever having this irate lunatic scream at me, I asked HR if I could log into my emails on her computer. Surprisingly, Sarah, the HR lady, agreed. Imagine the absolute crap-eating grin as I pulled up the three-day-old email from Rick reminding me of our conversation and confirming that I was to stick to the duties and times as stated in my contract and smugly and innocently told Sarah, I just did what my boss told me to do. And the best part was the sheer horror on Rick's face when I pulled out five printouts of that email and handed them to him and said, I have more of these at home just in case you feel like destroying these ones and removing the emails from the system. Now, is there anything else? Can I get back to work or am I still fired? Rick resigned that day. Oh my God. If he didn't resign, I bet he was fired because, oh my God, that's crazy. That's so much money. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the conversion is, like 40,000 pounds is, I don't know, $80,000, maybe. I have no idea what the conversion rate is right now, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of stuff, got. oh my god. Ah, I know wonder if insurance would cover it, because it was like negligently unlocked. Okay, here is the next story. Oh, you want a photo roster of my staff to facilitate the tattling of tales? Okay. I spent my summers as a teen working as a lifeguard at the local lake slash water park. The job was pretty hard. We often had large groups rent out the pavilions and leave them absolutely trashed. Not to mention the state in which they'd leave the bathrooms, which we also had to clean. Alcohol was permitted, so the later it got, the drunker they get and the less attention they'd pay to, like making sure their kids weren't actively drowning. We'd regularly have to rescue kids who bobbed out too far, or worse, had gone down the water slide into the water over their heads after assuring the guard at the top that they could swim. There were a fair share of adults we'd have to pluck out of the deep water too, who were just too far overconfident in their swimming abilities. But we made up for the gross cleaning jobs and the consistent dampness from saves with a healthy dose of tomfoolery, and it was the best job I ever had. Cue to a few years later, I still had summers off, but I'd moved it with my partner to be more convenient for her job. So I got a job through a lifeguard company managing a local swimming pool in the area that is to say, hoitia and toitia. This pool ran like a dream. No booze, no deep water, no slides, and significantly less danger. I kept the staff on their toes with stories of what could happen, and we prevented any serious injury or accident from happening with the proactive rules enforcement. That wasn't enough for the members of this swim club though. They constantly found nits to pick and my time as manager was spent mostly as a complaint department. Not only did they want to complain to me, but they wanted to complain to their property manager about our staff. The property manager was basically the person who made the decision to outsource the running of the pool to the lifeguard company. We'd had a few good ones who really got involved, but this one was a typical micromanager. She wanted us to hang a poster with pictures of all the staff and their names so the resident busybodies could name names when they nitpicked. I said okay. 
We'll put up a staff board with all our faces on it. But I should mention, the lifeguard company took sun protection very seriously. We weren't allowed to guard without several layers of protection. Sunscreen, shirt, sunglasses, hat, umbrella, etc. Plus, we were supposed to be rescue ready with the lifeguard tube in hand and our whistle ready. So, that's how we pose for our pictures. If someone came to our impromptu headshot session out of uniform, uh-oh, can't have that, put on a shirt, here's my hat, oh, your sunglasses aren't polarized, best wear mine instead. Pose with your whistle ready. Once the board was up, all of the guards looked nearly identical. The lifeguard company owners, the people who actually hired and paid us, loved it. They already thought we were the model of professionalism, and this sealed the deal on that image. The members were still stuck in complaining to the property manager by saying, Um, one of the blonde girls yelled at my kid for breaking the rules. Can we get her fired? And the property manager would have to go through me anyways to find out who that was. Before my malicious compliance, if they could tell me what time they had a problem with something, I could just check the schedule and tell them exactly who was on duty. But never mind that now. I ended up leaving that job a few months later anyways because I couldn't keep up with the fabricated drama and the extreme levels of pettiness the members and property manager would stoop to. I did love testing the pH of those pools though. Anytime it was too high, I'd mutter to the staff, must be too many basic bitches here today. <laughs> oh god some people just live on drama like they just want to complain and and make drama like why i want my life to be calm why would you want that that's like so much energy although i do like reading or hearing about other people's drama so i don't know actually hmm, interesting anyway that's all the stories i have for you today i hope you enjoyed those r slash malicious compliance stories read by me read <laughs> please give the video a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe yes subscribe that's right and click the bell uh, notification thingy down the bottom um, and get notifications when I post a video, which is every day. Thanks so much for watching today. Bye-bye.